Welcome back to the Dreamlet Podcast. This is episode six, and today we're gonna talk about unconditional love. And today we have my longtime friend, Pearl. Hello. So, Pearl, um, <laughs> what do you think about unconditional love? Like, what's your sort of outlook on it? Well, are we talking about unconditional love specifically in like the context of a romantic relationship? No, I don't. I don't think so. Like, that's definitely a good place to start. Like, is to define what unconditional love is to the both of us. First, the unconditional love that I'm thinking of, I don't believe that it exists. So, I think unconditional love is the idea that you love somebody no matter what happens, like regardless of what happens to you, to them, or anything around you.、Mm -hmm. It's a very simple, like sort of explanation on my end. So, what is it sort of to you? It's similar for me, but I think in my head I make the distinction that I could continue to love someone or show love to someone, but I don't have to necessarily agree with their actions. So, like extreme example, if my brother were to commit murder, would not stand by that, <laughs> 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 not for that.、Um, but I don't think in my heart my love would suddenly fade for him. It doesn't mean I want to enable him. That's just how I view it. It's it's like two separate things for me. The whole reason why I brought you on to discuss this was simply because we had a discussion about like an imaginary scenario, and <laughs> we might as well just bring it up. Which is like, <laughs> actually, why don't you bring it up since like you're the one、right. who introduced it at first? Ladies, <laughs> let me know if you feel the same.、Um, but my scenario is that if you had a partner, right, romantic partner,、um, basically asking them the question rather. Or asking them the question, "Would you still love me if I turned into a worm?"、Mm. <laughs> yeah, simple as that. There's two. Wait, hold on. Let me finish, Scott. I I know you have a lot to say. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Your burning passion.、Um, <laughs> but for me, there's two like versions of this question. One is that I'm just a worm, like a literal worm, and I can't speak or talk or anything like that.、Mm -hmm. The second is that I'm a worm, but I'm still myself in the sense that. I could like verbally communicate with you somehow. Have all my thoughts, memories, personality. Yeah, yeah. Sort of like a, a psychic worm where you have telepathy and you can yeah, you like, can talk. Yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> <laughs> just just to answer the question in a straightforward manner, for me personally, I don't. I'm currently single, but if my significant other <laughs> turned into a worm and could not talk, could not like has lost all like. Personality and what made them them. I probably <laughs> have. I probably feel like at that point, you know, they're they kind of, in a sense, passed away. Like the person that I I once、Ouch. knew. <laughs> Why though? <laughs> well, I think if you sort of put it in terms of like, let's say they're not even a worm. They just fell into a coma, and like in the worm situation. Is there a way to bring them back? Is there a way to turn them back into human? Wait, hold up! You mentioned coma. You would stop loving your girlfriend if she was in a coma. <laughs> wait, wait, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, <laughs> I have to bring this up first、okay. <laughs> because because I am trying to relate it. Yeah,、um, in my head, there's no way to bring them back. Right, right. Well,、okay. it's 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 largely unknown. I mean, this is magical, right? Like, no one's ever going to turn into、right. a worm. So the rules aren't written out. But in my head, it's like. I don't know how you turned into a worm. I don't know if there's a way to bring you back. It's、right. just you are now a worm. And for the first time when we talked about that, I was like, I couldn't wrap my head around it. If you remember, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I, you kept being like, I would figure out a way to turn you back, and I was like, you can't, Scott. She's a worm. It's、yeah. too late. So, so that's why I bring up the coma thing, because like, if they were stuck in the coma and I knew they were going to be stuck forever, then of course at that point, like. I'm probably better off moving on with my life and trying.、Uh, to... uh, I'm sorry. Ow, ow. <laughs> But that's like the practical thing, right? <laughs> and that actually brings up an interesting statistic that I I wanted to mention as well. Sure. sure.、Um, and it's that in relationships between like、um, like man and woman, like a cisgendered man, cisgendered woman, if a single partner were to fall into like a great amount of illness, depending on the partner. The、mm -hmm. likelihood of the other partner leaving them increases. If the woman were to fall into illness,、um, she is six times more likely to be left, like divorced and left、mm -hmm. in a relationship, than the man. If the man were to be sick. Interesting. And there's there's also another statistic where it's like twenty percent of I think men are willing to leave their partner if their 
girlfriend turns like their physical shape changes in a way that they don't like like if mm. she gains weight or something right, happens right. um whereas it's much less for women yeah and so i feel like you're just playing into the, sta- no. the statistic <laughs> spot well if she fell into a coma you'd leave her that's part of the statistic you're part of the oh, hold, hold six on. times more likely <laughs> six. <laughs> hold on First, you're one of the six <laughs> firstly i'm always very skeptical skeptical about uh these statistics because i feel like i need to understand how they did the research uh, look at how they conducted it before i fully buy into yes this seems like they really put in the work to to make it a sound number statistic um but before that i mean even despite that if they were in a coma and i knew they were going to be in a coma forever that's different from like them being sick or them gaining weight or something like that because in those situations Mm-hmm. Go, f- go, go ahead. for it. I was, I was gonna-, gonna say. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. There's just like a delay, so we keep talking at the same time. I was just gonna say it's also. I want to hear whether or not you define like loving someone to be different than staying in a relationship with someone. Right. Because if you if your partner were to fall into a coma, yes, it might not make sense for you to stay with them long term if you knew it was gonna be forever. But right. like since this is about unconditional love, would you still love them? Of course. In the same capacity. Of course. I I feel like in the sense that I still care about that person and I still love them. Like you can love someone that's dead, right? You can love uh-huh. someone you once knew and they've passed away now and you still care about them in your heart yeah. and stuff like that. But in terms of, like you said, practicality and for your relationship, you should probably move on and not try to turn that worm back into a human if you know you can't, okay. you know? Do you feel like you are able to move on though? Like you're saying practically that makes most sense, which I'm not going to completely disagree with but a lot of the times people in this situation don't not because they consciously choose not to but rather like their heart just can't let go yeah i think that's very true there are situations with certain people that you'll still have feelings for them no matter what in our scenario in our case where they're in a coma or they turn into a worm like the situation sucks but they did not directly try to hurt you if that makes sense Uh uh-huh so I think the test of unconditional love is when you're like personally for me, when I thought about it the first time when my college friend asked me, do you believe in unconditional love? I said no, Uh because I told him, what if the person that you're talking about, the person you loved, decided to murder your entire family, like my family? Um, And from there, I feel like at that point, I'd probably hate them. I'd probably despise them. And let's say their reasoning was that they took too much time away from like us being together or something like that. Uh-huh. So they're basically a psychopath. Of course, if they have a shitty reason like that, you're going to hate them or the result of what they did like causes you to break that love. So that's why I said unconditional love doesn't exist because there can be, there exists a case where that love can be broken and unconditional love means it can never be broken. Mm. For me, it's kind of interesting because I do agree with your your thought process in that specific scenario. And I I think similarly myself, but for me, there's a difference between like familial love and romantic love. Mm. Like when I think about it and I don't know, maybe it's because like the idea that we're blood related or that I spent like my whole for right now, the majority of my life knowing them because I'm still like in relatively close contact with my brothers and my, my family. I feel like I am more able to hold on to that love when it comes to family. And I think I think as as time goes on and as I spend more time with my partner, they slowly like shift in becoming like this person who I've only met for a few years into family. Mm-hmm. But at least in the beginning, those stay separate for me. Okay. The difference between familial love or friendship love or just, I mean, platonic love and romantic love, definitely all slightly different. It's It's kind of difficult to really describe what those differences are at different levels. I, I feel like for me right now, since I haven't had uh, a romantic relationship for a very long time, it's like, I almost forget how, like what what makes it different from like me caring a lot about um, like a friend or a family uh-huh. member. Of course, like there's that aspect where like you're with the person that you're with, you will do a lot of things that you don't do with family and friends, obviously. But other than that, Everyone sort of experiences love in a different way. And to try to describe it is is very 
nebulous. It's difficult. You can only describe it for yourself. At least that's what my personal opinion is. For me, I, I feel like m my sort of love for family and friends feel very similar. Like they're they're not that different. Yeah. Like it it matters more to me that we spent time together, had a lot of experiences, shared a lot of moments and memories, and fit well together. More so than like oh that person over there is my cousin, but we hardly ever talk. You know. For me, I experienced love differently, but I guess the whole reason why I bring this up is because when you were talking about the example where, like, if your partner were to murder your entire family, obviously that would kind of end your love for them very efficiently. And <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same, but I can also feel that it would be different. Like, if my brother were to murder the rest of my family versus like my current partner, I would have different levels of like forgiveness or tolerance. Mm. Um, and I don't really know how to ex quite explain why that is. I I think I think I feel similarly. Like there's there's just a difference in it that is is just like inborn, I guess. Just just natural. Like if you have a sibling, you probably understand, right? Um, yeah. I do have a sibling, so I have a sister. So if <laughs> she did that, then yeah. There's a, there's a difference in it. It, it reminds me of like Sasuke and <laughs> Itachi. You, <laughs> you nerd. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, it's so hard to describe that difference. It's sort of, it's sort of like if your sibling did it, you'd, you'd want to try to understand them more. You'd, you'd sort of like, I don't know. It's like yeah. a diff different type of for, hatred. I don't know. For me, for me, what, what that difference is partly is like the unconditional love aspect though. Like I feel like I have unconditional love for my family right off the bat. Like that's already established. Mm. Obviously it wasn't established since I was born because I didn't have like conscious thought, but it since I was with them since like my birth it kind right. of just developed whereas for a partner that's something that builds over time so it's we can be together for years before like that gets established so what do you what do you think establishes it like at what point do you reach a point where you feel like it's that love that it's for family or that's almost like unconditional love at that point I don't know it's a hard it's a hard thing to describe. I don't know if I can pinpoint it. I think time definitely plays an aspect. Mm -hmm. Like, because our lives are so dynamic and complex that we can't effectively predict the future. And so knowing that they will be with me through all of the changes definitely helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just being able to like build that trust in them. And that for me, since I'm a very cautious, I wouldn't say paranoid, but like hyper cautious person that happens over time. Right. I think I can describe it for me, even though I don't believe in unconditional, <laughs> unconditional <Yeah>. love. <laughs> I think the point where someone becomes a close friend or someone that I like really love that I feel no matter what happens, as long as they don't murder my family and like <laughs> directly try to hurt me. At the point where I feel I love them and will always love them is when I feel like they've done something for me that I'll never forget. So it's a little vague, but there have been moments in my life where I just feel very sad uh -huh. and it's just a feeling of despair. And there are people that I would reach out to, to, to feel better. And if there's enough of that and they're a, a friend that I feel comfortable confiding in, in those situations, it sort of indicates to me that they're a friend that I can trust and they're a friend that will be there for me when I need it. Uh -huh. And if they helped me feel better, even more so, it's like they've earned that and the way i think it's easier for me to just illustrate it in in the sense of like an image it's sort of like me uh -huh. in i know this is so like <laughs> edgy but <laughs> an image <laughs> imagine me <laughs> it's <laughs> this is me imagining it um yeah. to myself <laughs> i i imagine myself just in complete darkness and there's a ray of light and that ray of light is coming from a friend and uh -huh. if that friend has ever been that light in the darkness for me, then I feel like they've earned my, I'm not going to call it unconditional love, <laughs> but, <they've, laughs> but your love, they've learned, they've earned my love. Yeah. It yeah. Do you feel like it requires some sort of consistency in order for that to be established though? Like there are a ray of light to you, but do they have to be a, a certain number of times and not let you down a certain number of times for for that to be true that you love them because that's how it is for me i i consistency is like a big 
thing for me and dependability. Right.、Um, I think I think for me it it only matters that it was impactful one like one or two times.、Um, wow. Because I guess one time if it was super impactful then I'm gonna remember it forever. But two、yeah. times is like sort of saying it's not a one time thing. Like they'll. Be、mm-hmm. there for me again if I need it. What if it's only a two-time thing? <laughs> <Yeah> . Well, maybe, but I guess where I'm trying to get at is, for me personally, I treasure and cherish memories. So as long as it made me feel a certain way at some point, then I'll remember it. And by remembering it, I I don't need it to be super consistent all the time.、Um, uh-huh. Yeah. So so there's just I mean you. <laughs> I I share a lot of things with you, so so y- you're part of you're a ray of light to me, and、hey. <laughs> I'm part of the exclusive club. <laughs> and and you know the people I've talked about that are rays of light to me, and wow, and there's that's why I care about them so much, and that's why I won't ever stop caring about them unless, like I said, unless they directly try to harm me.、Um, I do not have plans to murder your family. <laughs> I'm. I'm Very grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Scott. You're welcome. <laughs> but, but that's sort of my my path or my sort of criteria for how someone gets there in terms of me caring about them enough to the point where I I would say I love them. You know, almost as much as a family member, if not more. Yeah, for me, the road is is a lot different. For me, I feel like I just have to be like truly a hundred percent comfortable in them. Because、mm-hmm. I was like, while you were talking, I was kind of thinking. I was like, is it all about trust? And I have a lot of love in my heart for people that I don't necessarily like trust or know、Ooh. that I can rely on one hundred percent. Interesting. <laughs> that's that's true. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I, so I, I was thinking about like other instances where, like, why do I feel that way then? And to be honest, it's like people that I have lived with at one point or another influences me a lot more. I think being able to see someone. At all moments of their, I won't say life because that's not true, but like all moments of their day,、mm-hmm. it's not like I only hang out with them for a few hours and it's nice. But maybe they were just putting up a front or something, even、right. though they're having a hard day. Or I don't know. It's just something about living with someone. You see them in the like most vulnerable moments. You see them like in the morning when they're all disheveled and like tired.、Yeah. I think just like seeing someone as a whole through all of their moments does something to me. And having them see me that way as well, and still stick around, means something to me. That's I like that a lot. I think that I've never really thought about that before, and it makes a whole lot of sense. I feel like everyone has a sense of that proximity effect, where if you're close to someone in terms of location, like you know, you grew up with friends in your neighborhood, or you went to school with the people in your city, and you can hang out often. Definitely, physical proximity matters a whole lot, and I think for me. That's been pointed out to me by like a good amount of my friends before, and I feel like I wanted to deny it or at least try to fight it.、Uh-huh. And that's another reason why I try to still keep in contact with people that aren't nearby、uh-huh. and that I can't see. But I do believe it matters because <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah.、Uh, and and you're talking about the closest form of that pr- proximity effect, which is yeah for me literally would, living together. Yeah, for me that's what super like. Fast forwards that process for me living together. Yeah, I think if it were to happen outside of that context, like I just meet up with them a lot, it takes like significantly longer time for me to feel close.、And、that's probably why they feel more like family afterwards too, because like living together is a very intimate thing, and the first form of that that we experience is through family. So、yeah. in my head, it kind of like psychologically tricks me, and I'm like. Yeah, I guess we're just family now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guess maybe, I love you like family. Maybe it's a biological thing. It's like they sleep in the same under the same roof. You you must trust them, you know. <laughs> yeah, like they are my tribe. Like they are my community. Exactly. Yeah, that is very true. That is a、uh, a significant thing that can't be ignored for sure. Because I do feel like even though in my like in my head I'm like I know I'm not alone, right? Because I have a lot of friends、uh-huh. that I can talk to and. I have family that I can talk to too, but whenever I'm in the house alone, I'm like I feel a little <laughs> like alone or like you know、yeah. like lonely. But it it's literally just a physical effect,、um, like me seeing that I'm inside this home by myself that makes me feel、yeah. like I'm alone. Wow.、Um, so yeah, that that's definitely a good good thing to keep in mind. Yeah, we should just build a commune where we have all our 
friends live in. <laughs> <laughs> then we can be one big happy family. <laughs> I've always imagined eventually owning a place where my friends could just stay over whenever they wanted to. That would that's, be cool. Yeah, that's always been one of my life goals, I guess. <laughs> I really hope you make it. <laughs> I would love to stay there. <laughs> yeah, it'd have to be a, a decently large place for to fit, you know, multiple people at once. Those are called mansions. <laughs> <laughs> what, one day? <laughs> one day. But, but we should circle back. Let's circle back to the worm question. Right. In the in the um, Second sense. version where yeah, in the version where your partner retains like their the ability to speak and like communicate with right. you, their memories, personality. <laughs> Firstly, I I want to reiterate my answer to you in person. I would <laughs> yeah. assuming that's possible. I'm like, "Well, they just turn into a worm and they're like speaking to me somehow." Magic must exist. <laughs> so, so at that point, I would like go out and try to turn them back into a human. Cause, cause unless like it was a one-time magic occurrence, I I just won't. I think for the rest of my life, if I really loved that person, like they were my significant other, like my wife or something, I would, uh -huh. you know, search to the ends of the the world, the earth, to to figure it out. Let's say, let's say in that scenario, you can keep searching. That's fine, mm -hmm. but. You go to like, let's say somewhere in your travels, you go to like a wise little old witch or something and she foresees your future and tells you, and this is up to you whether or not you trust this, right? But she tells you, and she's quite reliable, that you will keep searching, but you'll never find it. Let's say the answer does exist out there somewhere. Damn. But let's say <laughs> you, you will never find it, right? Yeah. So, but you will live that life continuing to love your, your partner in that scenario. I definitely think so. That in in that situation, it's a lot easier to actually stay with your partner because their personality still exists. Uh -huh. They can talk to you. They can. They're there uh, physically as a worm, but they. <laughs> but but like I think just being able to talk to someone is is a huge difference. Like they can voice uh -huh. their thoughts. They can comfort you. You can have a good conversation, debate, all that stuff. What about the scenario where I'm just gonna ask you a bunch of what ifs now? <laughs> um, what about the scenario where like you have a human partner, she gets into a car accident, so she's paralyzed. She has to be in a wheelchair, right? Uh -huh. Still has her physical form, can barely move, like maybe only move her like upper extremities. Um, but the the damage has caused it, so she can't speak anymore. Um, can she still think? Like, yeah, can she, she can still think. So she can probably still like type, right? Um, yeah. If, if she can talk or communicate, then that's good. That's good. But, but what about the first scenario with the worm? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, wait, I guess, wait, I'm thinking of a different, I'm thinking of a third scenario where she can't communicate, but she's a worm, but like she has her like human intellect. How about that? Would you still love her if she can't talk to you outright, like verbally? That's hard. I, I mean, I'm assuming. But you can, but you can put like a little alphabet on the floor and have her crawl to each letter to like form <laughs> words. <laughs> Whoa, that I feel like that take really long. At that point, like. At that point, it's too much work. No, at that you. point, we need to discover like something else that would actually work as a better form of communication. Yeah. Well, maybe you can put like a little phone in front of her and have her like text that way, and it's much faster because her little <clears throat> worm body can activate the phone. Yeah. There's gotta be assuming they have intellect they must have like a brain right or something do worms yeah have i don't know it's magic it's worm magic <laughs> okay well either way there's there's probably the potential of creating some sort of device where you can communicate which makes it turn into the second case right yeah the second case with extra steps yeah i yeah like I, there's gonna be some like a, a little bit of a larger burden like i mean who's gonna create this technology you're probably gonna have to start it or like yeah. get enough traction to some for someone else to take it as a project just piggyback off of elon musk's Neuralink. <laughs> <laughs> Neuralink on a worm it, it, it works on pigs and monkeys <laughs> elon just gotta a move magic on to worm. worms <laughs> it's a magic worm what if like the worm brain doesn't have anything in it but some magical quality i don't, I don't know, know. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. too far now <laughs> I see what you mean, though. I, I'm trying to dodge the question, and I, I'll just answer it outright. I, I think there is a certain point where it becomes way too difficult to stay with this person for like the rest of your life. Of course, you still love them, 
So in the un unconditional love sense, as long as they don't do direct harm to you, then I will still love them. But I feel like staying with them for the rest of my life is like very, would be very challenging. Um, like I definitely help take care of them, but I don't think I would like want to just stay with them for the rest of my life, if that makes sense. Um, that's hurtful. <laughs> it's it's hurtful, but like if if like it takes like an hour to 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 speak a sentence every time, it's it's just a little too much, you know. Uh, well, that makes me think. What to you, like, what qualities makes you love somebody? Then, like, what mm. is it about the other person that makes you say I love them? Right. Is it just like part of it for you? It sounds like is kind of like not ease of access, but just like um convenience no that sounds, that's, oh, yeah, that that sounds, sounds worse. bad you, but you know what i'm trying to say can you phrase it better for me sure <laughs> basically basically okay. i'd say streamlined communication but i don't think it's necessarily that i think there's an underlying thing which is like it takes up too much effort on your end at, at like a certain point you know like let's say mm, yeah i don't know yeah i i just think like at a certain point where the communication breaks down to the to where like you cannot can no longer understand them or comprehend them in the way that we're comprehending each other right now wow uh -huh. or even if i had to learn sign language and that's that's all we can communicate with i would be fine with that but to the point where they have to type on a phone each time and it takes very very long and that yeah i i, I don't know what it, it <laughs> I, I think it's mostly the co communication aspect for me it's not necessarily the I mean, it ties into convenience, yes, Conve convenience of communication, <laughs> but but it's mostly the communication aspect. I feel okay. All right. So in I, that in the second scenario, you would love them because you could just still communicate with them. Yeah, I, I think in both scenarios, I would love them, but in the second scenario, I would be more likely to stay with them, assuming you know, like we really, really loved each other in the past, and like this is like my wife and the person I want to be with for the rest of my life, stuff like that. You know, um, if it was just like a regular. Um, girlfriend or something like that that <laughs> i somewhat liked then you know that's 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 too much there's there's different levels right uh, um interesting, interesting. <laughs> i'm just being completely honest here like it's a worm like this is this is yeah. like very very difficult of a situation well you you mentioned honesty so i want to ask you when when guys are asked this question by their partners what do you think is the appropriate mm. answer for them <laughs> to answer with firstly i've never heard this question asked by anyone other than you <laughs> but well, let's say like, yeah but let's say like one of your male friends comes up to you and is like my girlfriend's been asking me the same question i've, I've right, been right. i've been dodging it but like today i have to give an answer like what should i say hmm. or what do you think is right to be said i think you should be honest with yourself and just give whatever answer you feel is is truthful to you Ah, no. <laughs> no, no. I disagree. <laughs> Sorry, but continue, continue. I got ahead of myself. Feel free to jump in because that's all I really had to say. <laughs> Don't be honest. Why would you do that? You idiot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel, and I feel quite strongly about this. Um, I feel like the answer should always be yes. And hear me out. It's not because you necessarily always believe in the yes. Mm -hmm. But and this is something I mentioned to you in person, but like and like a woman or not even a woman, it doesn't have to be woman like specific, you know, it's not gender mm -hmm. and a gendered question. But when your partner is asking you this question, like what they are actually seeking is reassurance and validation right. that you love them um, and that you will continue to love them even in the moments where it's hard or it's convenient or they go through a change and they consider that change as like having an effect on your love. Mm. I see, I see. So I feel like, because I feel like, come on, like in this reality that we know, we are never going to turn into worms. You yeah, know? <laughs> you're right. Like, you're I, feel right. Like, <laughs> I feel like this question is such low hanging fruit for a lot of people where they're meeting this nonsensical question with a sensible answer. But like emotion, it's an emotionally charged question, right? And they're right. meeting it with logic. And that's just an incompatibility what they're truly asking and I but I think a lot of people know but they refuse to buy into for whatever pride or I wouldn't say pride or ego but just like the sense of being true to themselves or being right yeah. or you know logical rational um they want to like argue but like she's never going to turn into a worm she's just asking will he still love me if I turn fat or right. will 
you still love me if something changes i shave my head i don't know whatever have you right um you, if we go through hardships essentially and it should be yes <laughs> you definitely bring up a good point and even yeah you're right even if it's some sense of oh you have to be honest like or even if it's like for honor or something like that um, at the end of the day it's probably better to make sure the person you love and care about feels that security and that comfort yeah. I, I i can definitely agree with that which sort of takes us to another question that i want to bring up like i know for that one you described it as long low-hanging fruit the worm question and how yeah. it's you know, it's nonsensical. It won't happen. But how about situations that could happen? Like everything we've been talking about, <laughs> like the whole coma <laughs> thing or the getting disabled and getting fat and stuff like that. Like mm. those are real questions that I feel could actually be brought up. And I think, does that change your answer? Like, should should you still, I guess, lie in a sense that yeah, I'll still care about you no matter how fat you get or I'll still care about you if you become paralyzed, all that stuff. For that, my 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 answer definitely does change. I think in that situation, you have to be more realistic. Mm -hmm. But you also, it's like realism, but with consideration for your partner's feelings. Right. Um, I It just depends on your own philosophy of love, I think, at that point. Mm -hmm. Like whether or not you truly believe like are looks that important to you to where you would leave a partner if they gained a few pounds or like if they fell into um, a coma or got paralyzed, would you leave them? I think it just depends. In, in those situations, it's important to kind of more so follow what you believe in. Yeah, I I think there's like a, a spectrum. So if this is me thinking off the top of my head, but let's say there is the nonsensical situations on one side <clears throat> and then yeah. the extremely realistic could happen <laughs> like greater than has 50, happened before yeah yeah greater than 50 percent or even 80 percent of happening 80 percent chance of happening um and then another meter right under it that's like should you lie <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it's sort of like yes when it's completely nonsensical and you can comfort yeah. give them comfort um yeah. but as soon as it gets to the point where these are real possibilities, you should probably not lie like, <laughs> yeah. to, to keep them, even to comfort them. Like, like I'm trying to think of a, a good example. Like, say if they asked you, oh, can I start taking drugs or something or doing drugs and you don't like people or you're against drugs or something like that, right? Uh -huh. you, you should probably answer truthfully and tell them what you think and, and say like, I will probably see you in a different light. I will not um, like you as much, stuff like that. Um, that's just an yeah. example, not, yeah. not my personal beliefs, but yeah. Yeah, I think it definitely becomes hard w depending on what the reality is because there are some factors that are outside the person's control where morally it feels more ambiguous as to like, would it be wrong to say that I will stop loving you or my love will lessen? Like if they get into an accident with a drunk driver, completely not at fault, or they end up being paralyzed or something like that. Yeah. Versus something within their control, maybe gaining a few pounds or taking up like substance use, like you said. Like it's it's very definitely very complex. But it also makes me think like a lot of people probably are wondering why people bring up these types of questions in the first place. Like stupid, silly um questions like, Would you love me if I were a worm? Mm -hmm. And I think it's because the reality what they're alluding to the reality of it like what they're trying to ask is a very heavy topic right mm -hmm. like it's a lot harder to ask your partner point blank would you still love me if i became like fat ugly and bald <laughs> um but it's more easy to skirt around that question and kind of test where they're at and what their beliefs are right now in terms of unconditional love or whatever you want to call it by right. asking these like softer blow questions right I see. So I, I, I failed the test. <laughs> I failed the test. <laughs> it's because it's cause, it's cause like a lot of the times when people, <clears throat> um, a lot of times like people realistically know the answer. For a lot of women, they know if they gain a lot of weight. More times than not, not everyone of course, but more times than not, their partner will probably like either their affection or love or maybe it's just their attraction. It'll wane for them. Mm -hmm. And that'll definitely affect their relationship. Um, 
So it's kind of like they're scared to ask it because they kind of know the answer that's coming. So they're trying to just, I see. like I said, skirt around the question. Thank you for giving me your perspective on that. I didn't really think of it that way to that extent. I, I feel like for sure the sort of top layer of it, of making sure that your partner feels good by by sort of giving that, I guess, white lie of saying, yes, of course, I'll stay mm -hmm. with you even if you're warm. <clears throat> of course, that's for comfort, right? But but it, it appears that for you, it goes a lot deeper than that. And I, I didn't really, yes. I didn't really expect that. I'm psycho. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't say that. <laughs> you don't know how much my partner has had to put up with the questions I ask. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting right here. I can just strangle him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Any, anyways. <laughs> but I guess I do want to bring up something about the lying aspect, though. I I know we dismissed it as like being prideful or like, or even just trying to be honorable and stuff like that. But I think there's like an idea that you should never lie no matter what. And for me personally, I used to believe in that ideal a lot. But over time, it's broken down and I've gained a more rational standpoint on it. Because in a situation where you're held at gunpoint and somebody's asking for like, say for some odd reason you have nuclear codes and, and, <laughs> and you're held at gunpoint and they're telling you to give it to them in the next minute they have to do it otherwise they're going to get caught um and they're going to shoot you before then you should probably lie you should probably lie in that situation at the last second and get out of it um or if like someone's holding your family hostage and like they're asking for your address you should probably lie as well or if someone's asking you about a worm <laughs> and if they turn <laughs> into one and they're just asking it for the sake of feelings and it's not going to harm anyone by just giving that white lie like you should probably also do it like there uh -huh. it literally harms no one and it only harms you if you for some odd reason have fallen into the belief that you are a pure soul that can never lie and should never lie and that it will always and it'll taint your soul that's not true like it's just not like you can lie for good reasons and for the sake of good like yeah if you have to make a lie to save the world and everyone living in it or tell the truth and everyone dies, I'm pretty sure you would lie. <laughs> and, and it would yeah. be a good thing that you lied. So <laughs> so I'm just trying to break down the idea of like, never lying is some sort of an amazing ideal that you you have to live by. Cause I definitely used to believe that, but it's like I said, I, I've changed my stance on it. I'm glad you've crossed over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I think it's hard when it comes to like lying. There's so many like nuances to it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. It's, it's really hard it's a lot it's very much so like a moral question yeah it, it's a lot easier to I, th I think it's also a lot easier to live by that rule than it is not to of course it depends on the situation and what type of person you are like obviously if you're like a hardcore liar about everything and you're doing it for selfish reasons then yes that's not good but if there are a lot of situations where you could lie or could not lie or could you could choose to lie or not and there are like varying levels of different outcomes that could happen because of it like somebody's feelings are involved or or your own like sort of um morals are involved like there's just just like a lot of layers to it then yes there's it makes it more complex and it's like it's almost easier to just like never lie than it is to choose when it is a good time to lie to protect to lie to um make someone feel better or help someone or just overall create a more positive outcome for more people um, yeah yeah. yeah, I do feel like a lot of the people who rigidly never lie, uh, even when all factors in a situation are pointing them towards lying for quote unquote the greater good, um, I feel like they it's like a, a very willful act. Like they know they're going against the grain or they know that they're going to hurt someone's feelings or that it's just going to have a negative effect, but they choose to stick with it because I want to say it's pride almost at that point. Yeah, like uh, it's pride. It's pride veiled as, or I don't know. It just. I think for me, I just can't understand that mindset. Yeah, for me because I used to be in that mindset. It's less about pride and more so about like about trying to follow an ideal that like you just got to do the right thing, and the right thing is not to lie. It's it's sort of just like trying to live by that code. Trying to it's more of a sense of honor than it is pride, if that makes sense. But yeah. but I think it's short sighted. And I think that's why I changed. It's it's because you have to realize that there are 
situations that are more complex than just like black or white. Lying is bad and telling the truth is good. That's that's the way I see it at least. And that's why I changed. But of course, everyone has their own perspective on the matter. Yeah, I think you used the wrong word. I wouldn't say pride. I would say malice. I would say malice thinly veiled as like integrity. Mm, interesting. There's some people you just you you can just tell that they it's like the same it's like the same people who are mean to others, but they're call themselves honest, right? They're like, oh sorry, I'm just being brutally honest. I see. And yeah. But they're saying something very hurtful or spiteful. For me, if it's like the same flavor where <laughs> <laughs> where they're like oh sorry well i'm just being truthful i'm just being honest um yeah you i know i'm not lying but i think that's definitely a group that exists like a group of people that do that in yeah. that sense but i don't yeah. think for me i was like that i think it was just more oh so no i don't believe that that for you oh thank you but <laughs> but <laughs> but to explain it like there are definitely a lot more people that do or are in the mentality that i used to be in which is more so for like like an act of good rather than rather than like doing it in the guise of mad malice you know uh, like I, I i do believe that a lot of people just just try to always be honest because they feel like it's the right thing to do i haven't seen that as much to be honest hmm. i think it exists and i think you're right in that aspect but yeah. in terms of like people who used to always be truthful or are always truthful <clears throat> for like the sake of truth i think you're like the only one i could think of <laughs> out of the oh. people Wow, thank that you. I like, interact with. <laughs> that's, that's a that's a high honor to receive, but yeah. But I feel like even to this day, like I find it very difficult to to um, even though I've, we've been talking about it and how I've changed, I still find it very difficult to sometimes like lie to that like, oh, <laughs> yeah, of course I would still love you as a worm and still stay with you forever. You know, I I, I still find that difficult to to do. As like, soon as you get a girlfriend, I'm going to tell her to ask you that so I can like, watch your reaction. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. Let, let's see what happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know what? I, I would have practiced at that point and I feel like I would have, I would give a good performance, but... Oh, really? But, yeah. But like, you know, there's certain things that people ask me and I don't expect it and, and I it takes a while for me to answer or I answer in a way where it's technically not a lie, but like I still give my feelings on it, you know? Yeah. Like if someone asks me like if like we went we went to Yosemite recently and if somebody asked yeah. me, Oh, how are you doing in terms of like my capability of hiking more? I, I'd probably uh -huh. be like, you know, I'm, I'm okay I'm okay or or <laughs> I'd stay quiet and let other people um talk first. Like I wouldn't yeah. outright say, Oh yo, my knee is killing me <laughs> like <laughs> which is exactly what happened. <laughs> but I know. But yeah, I I try to for the sake of not weighing down the group, you know, or, or holding them back from doing what they want, I try to let them have their say first and I'll be okay, you know, because I will be okay. Yeah. But but yeah. my knee is killing me. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to tell that to everyone and like, like stop the hike, you know. Well, unless other people speak up first and they're like, yeah, it's, this sucks. I want to stop. Then you'd be like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. listen to this guy. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> I, can, I can see you doing that. Stop. I mean, that's what happened. Like, I know. <laughs> for the second day. <clears throat> but but you get what I mean, right? It's it's sort of like not being super vocal about um, certain things and letting seeing what happens first before like completely revealing the truth or giving that white lie like just just scanning the grounds and surveying the yeah. grounds and, and you're seeing... just taking all aspects into consideration because exactly. you're trying to be considerate of their feelings yeah. i get that yeah and that sometimes takes time and and makes your response slower which which <laughs> indicates that you could potentially be not <laughs> telling the full truth <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like i i do that so often it's it's hard yeah you have to practice because if i were to ask you would you let me if i was still if i was a man <laughs> and you were like um well and you took like three minutes to answer i'd be like shut up i don't even want to hear it like i know the answer is no and you're just trying to tell me tell me no in a polite way yeah i feel like that's what that it, point. that's exactly what happened like the first time you asked <laughs> <laughs> I I never actually said no, right? I, but you were I, just like a worm, a worm. <laughs> <laughs> you were like the thing that crawls on the floor, right? And I was like, yeah. What yeah. about it? But it's it's very difficult. I know we we went on a big tangent, but I do feel like it's it's a good discussion to to have about like you know telling the truth all the time and lying and stuff like that. Um, yeah, because it is of course there will be so many situations where telling the truth is way better. 
Um, but there will be some situations where lying can be better. Speaking of feelings, though, I wanted to ask who who in your life right now would you say like you love the most? That's a tough question. I've never really thought about that. Okay. Well, for the sake of the question, just imagine that person in your head. Let's say that someone that you love the most to wear a rejection of their love for you would devastate you. So you don't have to think of a specific person, but just think about like someone in that position. Okay. Um, let's say you become a worm. <laughs> <laughs> in this scenario, you become a worm uh -huh. and they look at you and they're like, ew. <laughs> and and let's say in this scenario, you can speak and they're like, and you're like, hey, dude, it's me. Like, it's Scott. And they're like, whoa, <laughs> Scott, you're a worm now. Yeah. And they're like, dude, you're gross. And you felt over the next couple of days that like their love for you has just dissipated right. like that. <clears throat> How would you feel? <laughs> You're saying I can communicate that to them, right? Yeah, you can. Mm, interesting. Well, luckily, I don't have a, a girlfriend or a wife, so <laughs> <laughs> so the situation is a lot easier. But <laughs> yeah, uh, like wouldn't that hurt your feelings? Of course, it would hurt my feelings. <laughs> but but I I think I'd sort of feel like I understand. Like oh, I'm mm, a worm where now. Coming from. Yeah, I'm a worm now. It's harder for them to give me attention. I don't want to be a drag to them. I can communicate, so I can think, so I can probably still do things that are useful, like come up with good ideas, party games. Oh, uh, or... <laughs> now I can just think of you as a little worm trying to. It's hardest to be useful. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, there's so much you can do by just thinking and and communicating. I feel so if I'm still able to communicate somehow, I I I think I'd still retain a good amount of care from the people i care about you know because it'd be like but this if... like me and you talking mm -hmm. right now except you can't see me or you'd see a worm <laughs> and i'm still talking to you like i still think we can have some great conversations we yo, yeah, i'm gonna start true. a podcast the a podcast you with should... the worm <laughs> <laughs> you should uh we should have filmed this episode and you should have um photoshopped yourself into a worm <laughs> like deep fake <laughs> at this point of the sure, conversation I, I will have a picture of a worm the whole time uh for okay. this uh, for this episode <laughs> just because you, you have mentioned to make, it you have to make the worm's mouth like move as if you're talking oh, oh what? no that's so hard <laughs> <laughs> actually i feel like i i there's a program that can do that in After Effects, Adobe After Effects. Well, it's kind Effects. of like um, it's kind of like those uh, what is it? The people who stream, but they're just like cute girls. Oh yeah, the VTubers. Yeah, VTubers. It's like that yeah. where every time you talk, their mouth is, looks like it's opening, but it's just a worm instead. Yeah, there's definitely programs that I can do that, but I I will probably just leave it as a worm. <laughs> oh come on, what what's the production quality on this video gonna be <laughs> <What>? like? <laughs> It's just a lot of effort, extra effort, and I have so many projects going on. What? I'm just kidding. Yeah. But let's say in a scenario, though, they like they forsake you. Like, you're saying that they would maintain some level of care. What if right. they wouldn't? I think the people that I, I truly love that were the rays of light to me, I, I think I have no doubt in my mind that they would still care about me. Mm. Would you still care about me? No <laughs> well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Scott, you know my, my automatic answer is a yes, but it's not a yes because because I'm lying, unlike some people in this room right now. <laughs> it's a yes because I genuinely believe it. I, I believe yeah. you. I, I don't think it's a lie. Yeah. I, I think I you mean, would still care I like about to me. garden, so I would get you a little nice little box of dirt, put in yeah, some scraps me in there. From the birds. Yeah. From from Belle even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Belle's not gonna know. No, she's her little brain wouldn't be able to understand. But yeah, I I feel like I have no doubt in my mind the people who that care about me would still care about me, and e even if it did wane because of my physical lack of physical form, or lack of my pr prior physical form, if I could still communicate, I feel like we could still share a strong bond. Uh, that's true. I feel like I would prank you a lot if you were aware. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm now my head's just wandering. <laughs> but yeah, that. I think that was that answered the question pretty much for <laughs> for multiple instances. I mean, we we definitely dove into the worm question way more than the whole unconditional love thing. Although I did give yeah. a very straightforward answer to why I don't believe it exists. Do I think the possibility of it could exist for someone? Yes, I do. But for me personally, I think there are certain acts that people can do that will essentially ruin the love, um, destroy it. So. For me, it does not exist. But so that's the answer to that question. But overall, I really enjoyed this whole 
warm conversation plus the tangent of lying and telling the truth. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. Yeah, two very interesting topics. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. And、uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. For everyone listening, yes, I would love you if you were a worm. <laughs>